special happen tonight. Every meeting, Jesus comes. But for the first time, I felt, I saw someone else came. The Father came. And I'm like, where is that in the Bible? And Jesus said, my father and I will come and make our home with you. And I will manifest myself to them. The father's here. So why don't you just lift your hands and tell Jesus how much you love him. Father, we welcome you tonight. Jesus, we love you. Precious, precious Holy Spirit, thank you for gracing us with your presence. He's so special. So wonderful. And you know, during the meeting, some of you had your eyes open to see Jesus, to see heaven, to see the angels. Can you give me a wave, those who, whose eyes were open? Can you just come up on the platform for a moment? I just want to... Uh, this is uh, going to be part of our worship. If you saw Jesus, the angels, the Father, just come and join me. Last night we talked about the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And Paul prayed in Ephesians 1.17 that the eyes of your heart may be opened, that you might know him. And the spirit of revelation will open your eyes to see him who you worship. So this is part of our worship. What did you see? What's your name? Ivan. What did you see, Ivan? I was dancing with Jesus. And alone robes, white as snow. It was beautiful. Just have uh, Jeff the catcher. What's your name? My name's Melissa. The Lord grabbed me by the face and put his head to mine and then grabbed my hand and took me into his green pasture with all of my loved ones. <laughs> and how beautiful and peaceful and loving it was. <sighs> I'm Susie and I saw, first when we were worshiping, I saw all the angels entering in and they begin to worship with us. And then I saw the father dressed in robes walking through and has had his scepter with you. That's what I saw. I saw, I saw uh, the Lord and I was talking to him and I said, we have so much work to do. And he said, just take a moment with me. And I just felt the angels and I felt um, just the Lord just coming stronger and filling, filling me up, filling us up. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 
I felt Jesus on the stage and he was putting all different rainbow colors all over the room. The Lord was putting rainbow colors all over, just going through every every one over their heads. Anyone else want to share? My name's Jim, and I I saw Jesus, and he was like walking through each aisle, um, and I saw him like it's like touching. He was touching heads, and uh, li- he was leaving his blood through his nail nail pierced hands on, and he was just yeah covering us in his blood. Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, glory and honor, glory and honor and power. Amen. (coughs) Amen. You know, sometimes you just get stuck. We're stuck corporately in his presence it's a holy moment it's a holy moment every eye closed point your heart to him let's sing I exalt thee Sarah so seats everyone god bless you we like to ask i like to ask if there was anyone in a previous meeting i know this is my first time in this location in uh, this church but if you're in a previous meeting and you got blessed online meeting or physical meeting and something good happened to you just lift your hands anyone been in the previous meeting something good happened to you al what's it about is it deliverance healing How, how were you blessed it was neither, but I call it a miracle um, after you prayed for me. So what was the problem? Um, October 4th, to 2020, I was on your online meeting, and I had been at every meeting that summer. And you'd, I'd always get there two hours early, so I'm the first one, and you'd always pass me up, and I'd get discouraged. Um, but then I started telling God, I, you've got a plan. This is He didn't pass me up just because he didn't like me. So that night, you... You decided to ask, does someone have any issues with their throat, I think it was, and I did have a scratchy throat, and I'm like, I'm taking this one. Because, <laughs> because um, I was having a kidney transplant that week. Um, so then you decided to pick me, you're like, and, and then the live stream lost me, and I'm like, no, Lord, don't let Satan do this. Someone else had lung problems on this page. Simon, is it? Hang on for a moment. Just hang on for a moment, Simon. Uh, I was looking for this guy, Ad 
Berto, I think his name was. Here he is. Did you have lung problems, sir? Where, where'd he go? And they were looking for me in the live stream. They couldn't find me, and eventually they found me. And um, I told you, can I get a prayer because I'm having a kidney transplant Thursday? Um, and you started praying for me. And immediately you're like, um, do you want it healed? And I said yes. And when you started praying for me, both my kidneys just started palpitating. So what's the problem? Um, I get congestion so horribly that I can't breathe in the evenings. And even it goes into my dreams, I'll be... In Jesus' mighty name, we command this, come out of him. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that's the anointing going into your, your sinuses. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That's the power of God going through your sinuses. You're released from this. Okay, breathe. Breathe through your nose. How's that? That's great. You're free. Can I ask for a quick prayer? I'm getting a kidney transplant this week, and I want God to be in charge of it all. You want him to heal you? Yes. Do you believe he'll do it? Oh, I totally believe it. Okay, put your hands on your kid on that kidney. It's both of them. Okay. You better get a, a scan before you go and have your surgery. Find your new kidneys. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, go ahead, Aneta. In Jesus' name, function. We speak to both kidneys in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the power of God's coming on your kidneys, the power of God, the anointing of God, the healing balm of Jesus Christ flows from the top to the bottom of your kidneys. Be healed. Be healed. Function. You, Kara you come back yeah. to life. Thank you, Jesus. You come back to life. You come back to life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ right now. That's the power of God going through you. Thank it's just as easy for the Lord to heal kidneys as to open your sinuses. That's the power of God going through you. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. What do you feel happening, Edward? I feel like oil pouring through me and my kidneys are, like, pumping. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That pumping sensation is God changing your kidneys, giving you new kidneys. I see. And I'm breathing deeply. I see the blood flowing through your kidneys. See the blood flowing through your kidneys. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. And if the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. Thank you, Jesus. Now, don't go and have a kidney transplant when you've got new kidneys. Go and have it all tested first, okay? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Praise have God. Some more. Have some more, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And um, now, this is online, right? Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus can do it anywhere, anytime. The thing is, I've watched you for two years. I know you never say anything. You never promise anything. You, never, you don't touch people. You never promise anything until you've seen it in the spirit. And you nice to have someone describing my ministry as if they knew me. Yeah, bless you. <laughs> <coughs> so you feel your, your kidneys shaking? So they were palpitating, and you said, don't get that kidney surgery unless you go get it tested out. You didn't say you saw in the spirit that I was healed. Um, so I went and got it tested out. I, 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 w I was very happy, but um, it came back that it was bad still. I still needed to get the surgery. What the miracle is, I didn't know how I was going to pay for this. It was the third kidney transplant of, his kind, of its kind in the world. Um, so it was a research kidney transplant. And I didn't know how I was going to pay for this. Um, so we're looking at maybe a two, three million dollars surgery. Two years later, no, it's been almost three years. I haven't gotten a bill at all. I haven't gotten a bill or anything. 
So I feel... It, it got lost in U.S. posts, courtesy of Holy Spirit. <laughs> but I feel God had a plan in, in, in some manner, in some form. And I f said to myself, I feel guilty saying this, but I promised God I was going to say this testimony at some point. I sat down to write it to you so many times, and I always stopped. Um, so when I heard you were coming here, I had to come here, and I knew I was going to testify about it. Hallelujah. Praise God. And you know, God has many ways of answering prayer. And uh, one way is through surgery, financial provision, all sorts of ways. He, you know, uh, a long time ago, the Lord t t taught me that he has many ways of doing things. So don't put him in a box. Who healed you? Jesus. Amen. And who provided the $3 million? Heaven. <laughs> Amen. Someone say hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Thanks, Al. Thank you. So, yes. Dallas meeting. Uh -huh. And I asked for a new bladder. And I got a new bladder. You know how you have a new bladder? It works and you sleep all night. You don't have to get up and go to the bathroom. So, what was wrong with the bladder? Give us all the details. No. <laughs> no, you don't want them. To the glory of God. Yes, to the glory of God. So he can do anything. And if you have those simple little problems that aren't simple, ask God. Because Jesus heals. That's the Lord healing your bladder. You got a new bladder. What did you feel happened? Did you feel anything happen when you prayed for? Yes. <laughs> it's like whoosh, wonk. <laughs> whoosh, yonk. <laughs> That's how it was. And it works. Praise the Lord. What's your name? Linda. Linda. What's your last name? Welsh. Well, oh, you're providing host for someone. Yeah, uh, Brian. Uh, Brian. He's been telling me what a great time he's having with you guys. We love Brian. He's prayed for everyone I can find. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. So what would you say to someone here or who's, got, who's got a bladder that they don't want to talk about and, and they need a healing? You know, just humble yourself and ask for what you need. Sometimes it's a little private, but God made those private parts. And he likes bladders. <laughs> Tom, are we going to lift her back up on the stage? <laughs> What's your name? My name's Ronnie. I think that video up there is pretty late. <laughs> That's not exactly live stream, is it, Danny? <laughs> God bless you guys. What does that feel like? I, I, like wow. <laughs> like wow. Amen. Praise God. Let's talk to you, sir. Come. Come. God loves you. What's your name? Jim. Jim. What would you like Jesus to do for you tonight, Jim? Heal my throat. And there's something in there they're going to surgery, surgically take it out. Praise God. Praise God. I'm just going to pray for you, right? Just put your hand there. I've got cancer, but I don't know. you got cancer. Yeah, but I can't remember. You can't remember where it is, but Jesus knows where it is. Power God on you. What's his name? Jeff. Power God on you, Jeff. Just lie down and have surgery.
power God's on your lower abdomen, Jeff. They're working on you, Jeff. They're working on you, Jeff. You're in good hands, Jeff. Angels are working on you, Jeff. Just stand back. What do you feel happening, Jeff? Uh, what do you feel happening? What's happening? I don't feel anything. That's all right. Jesus is working on you. Praise the Lord. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Was there someone over there who wanted to share? Anyone else want to share the blessing in a previous meeting that they had? I watch you all. You, you must be a Jesus lover. I do. <laughs> What's your name? Linda. Linda. Well, we just have one person, okay? Well, one rather than none. Thank you. What's it about, Linda? Is it healing, blessing, deliverance? Um, I did, I did, it wasn't that big of a deal. Well, it was big. It, it is a big deal. This is the first time I felt the Holy Spirit was in your meeting, I think, in 2019. So, do you want to talk? There's a time for power, and there's a time for talk. And Jesus gets to decide what happens. Amen? It feels good. I want, I want my daughter to be delivered. She's Tori in the back. That's the power of God going through you, delivering you. I believe he delivers you, he delivers her. All right? It's the power of God delivering both of you. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, you got it live now, have you, Danny? It, praise God. Ooh. What does that feel like? Holy. <laughs> Just holy. You're free. You're free. Okay? You're free. Someone say praise the Lord. Praise God. So, is it Linda? Are you able to get up now? You're shaking. Turn to your neighbor and say, anything can happen in the presence of Jesus. <laughs> so what did you want to share? I want my daughter to be pretty. Oh, you want your daughter. Come up, bring your daughter up. There's no hiding daughter with your mum. <laughs> Give her a big clap, everyone. God loves you. What's your name? Torian. Torian. Praise God. God loves you. God loves you. We're just waiting on God, do you know? Just waiting on God. Just waiting on God. What do you feel happening? Thank you, Lord. I believe you're okay. I believe you're okay. When your mum, right? Yeah. I believe the both of you got delivered. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I believe you both got. That's why I'm waiting because I'm not seeing anything. I both you both delivered. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you're free, both of you. What's your name? Yvette. What's it about? Tell me the, what it's the problem. About when my husband had a chest infection, and what I did is I sat next to him, and I never thought of getting anything for me because you know, of course, it was for him. And so the prayer group said, "Well, you know, let us do a healing over you." And so I felt the power of the Holy Spirit in my chest. So I was always grateful, and I wanted to say thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We'll have some more. What did you say? Okay. Okay. Have some more. Okay. Okay. Praise God. Bless you. Sue, what do you need Jesus to do for you? Uh, to heal my Achilles tendon in my right foot and a persistent cough. <clears throat> so let's just wait on the Lord. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
So there's someone else in your life who's got problems. I'm looking at someone else. My whole family has problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of discourse in my family. Is there a man that's problematic? Um, no. No. So what's happening in your family? Just a lot of, um, I don't even know what the word is. A lot, we just need a lot of restoration and just, we're not a family, we're not real together. So it seems to me that in your family there's an unwanted visitor. Someone who's disrupting the family. So that's why I'm saying I see a man, a man figure, demonic, disrupting the family. Mm. Yes, that could be. Because when you have get togethers and it's all supposed to be going well, mm -hmm. it implodes. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> yes. So I'm looking at your family get togethers and I'm seeing this person, this demonic man. He comes in and he stirs people's brain mm. and he gets people to say things and to destroy the atmosphere. That's pretty much my family, yep. Yeah. Very, take offense very easily and get bitter. So the unwelcome visitor needs to be evicted. Mm, amen to that. <laughs> so let's everyone pray. Everyone pray. Everyone pray. So there was a man who died an unnatural death in the family and he needs to go. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Hello, can you stand? What's your name? Tasha. Tasha. I remember your face. <laughs> where, where did I meet you? Connecticut. Connecticut. Was that this year? Uh, just a few months ago, December. In, in December last year. That's right, last year. So uh, tell me in one sentence, what, what's it about? Well, in a nutshell, you had told me that I need, you were seeing a child, which happened to be my daughter, and that I needed to go and apologize to her, and which I did do. And But you had said that when I do that, I will receive breakthrough. And that came in the form of a new job that I'd been seeking for a long time. I said I wasn't sure what to write. You have a child? Yes. But I'm seeing a distance between you and the child. Okay, yes. Yes, I have two, and one I'm closer with than the other, as well as the physical proximity is correlating with that. So the other one I'm talking about, the one that you're distant from, okay? It's not that you're closer to one than the other, it's that you're distant from one. Yes. Okay, go to, you. it's a daughter, is it, or what? Yes. yes, that's true. So go to your daughter and ask for forgiveness, okay? Because her heart is growing hard. Yes. You need to go and ask for forgiveness. Even though you think she was wrong, ask for forgiveness, okay? And then you'll have that breakthrough. So I think. Wow. Yes, I give glory to God. So, so the Holy Spirit tells you to go to your daughter and ask for forgiveness, to say sorry. And if you would do that, he would give you breakthrough. Yes, so the new job is just 
I believe the beginning of breakthrough. There's other areas that God's shifting things in my life. So I thank God for him and your faithfulness to what he's called you to do. So Tasha, yes. so I believe that um, I'm seeing in the spirit, I'm seeing a crown being placed on you now. So he crowns us with his loving kindness and tender mercies. So, oh, I feel that. Do you feel that? I, I feel that power. I compose myself, but I probably shouldn't. Yes, I do know this is what God has told me. And I, 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 many people will not understand my words if I were to expound on that. They might think it's of the world and vain things, but the Lord has confirmed that time and time again. So seeing, seeing him crowning you, he, he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much. And praise God. How's your relationship with your daughter? It's getting better. It's getting better, and I will be more intentional about fostering that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to have a time where the Holy Spirit's locating people, and uh, Jesus Christ is the healer. So let's talk to this gentleman with the beard and the yellow shirt over here. You're it, sir. Come on, come on. What's your name? David. David, what do you need from the Lord? Arthritis. Where's the arthritis? Pretty much everywhere. Shoulders back, mostly back. That's the power of God coming on you. What's your name again? David. David, that's the power of God coming on you. Just close your eyes, I can't help you. It's the power of God coming on, on your back. On your back, thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. Praise that's due your name. For you are the king of glory. Oh, that's lovely. That's the power of God going through you. What do you feel happening, David? What's our what do you feel happening? What's happening? I don't feel any pain. You don't feel any, any pain? No. Okay, bend over. <laughs> Doing good. Huh? Leave your knees. That feels good. Feels good. Yeah. <laughs> Move your neck. Shoulders. That's it. It feels good. Who healed you? There's only one healer, and that's the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's have a talk to you. Can we talk to you? Me? Yes, you. Come on. Come on. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I think I'm drunk in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Joy of the Lord. <laughs> So the anointing is going through your life. The love of God is going through your life. Okay? Because I'm seeing sorrow. Okay? And he brings joy where there's been sorrow. Okay? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. My husband um, has dementia. And it's difficult. I wanted him to come tonight because I, I know God has healed him. And so right now, God's just healing your heart, okay? Just for context, many times 
let's call them carers, suffer trauma. So God's healing your heart. (sighs) Amen. Parents of autistic children understand what I'm talking about. Often people who give care need deliverance and healing and love. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, sir. Can we talk to you? Yeah. I'm Chris. Chris, come over here, Chris. What do you want Jesus to do for you? I have some arthritic hips going on and also kind of a trigger finger right now that I can't bend my hand, but it's bending now. <laughs> it's bending now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but I have arthritis in my hips that is causing me pain. How, how do you know you've got arthritis in your hips? Well, that's what... It, because it's already gone. It's gone. That's what the doctor said, yeah. Got to make the golf swing. <laughs> There's no pain there right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Who healed you? Jesus. All the arthritis is gone in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let's talk to you in the checkered blouse. Yes, come on. What do you want from Jesus? Uh, I would like my daughter to have a baby. She had a miscarriage. She's not here tonight. That's what I would really like. Okay, and yourself? I would like to be another grandmother. I don't really have anything for myself. That's really the desire of my heart, that my daughter would be healed. She wouldn't have a miscarriage again. So, I'm not sure how to put it in medical words, what I'm seeing, but there's... Uh, something that's overextended which is causing the miscarriage so there's a physical problem okay and that's the power of the Holy Spirit going through your daughter right now just close your eyes that's the power of the Holy Spirit going through your daughter right now I believe she's okay. I believe she's okay. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Hello, can we talk to you? Come on. What's your name? Bianca. Bianca, what do you need Jesus to do for you? Um, I've had endometriosis really bad since I was 17. And every... That's the power of God coming on you. Do you have it on the right side? Just put your hand on it. That's the power, power of God coming on you. Just going to touch you, all right? Come. What's your name again? Bianca. Bianca, that's the power of God going through it. I think you're right. Press, press yourself. Did you have pain? No. Did you have pain before? And only a certain time of the month, so... I believe you're okay. That's the Lord's still working on it. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And you're married. Where's your husband? He's right here. Come on, sir. So the wife knows the husband best. Come. So apart from the Lord, who knows him better? But what does your husband need? Uh, He needs healing for pain in his body. He's got pain in pretty, uh, a lot of places. <laughs> his wrist, his back, his joints. And what does he do? Um, he works in finance. So your, your pain 
is not physically rooted. Okay? So, but the Lord's not showing me, but he's dealing with it. Okay? You're free. It's left. Can I move? Do something? Yeah, feel good. <laughs> Excuse me, madam. Just let your husband work out. Can <laughs> Jump or something. Do something. Uh, jump or something? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It feels good. Yeah. Feeling good. So do you know what happened? What's that? A spirit just left you. It took it with... It was not physically rooted... Okay. Lung problems, lung problems, stand up quickly. Lung, lung, quickly. Breathing problems. There's a, someone with something like COPD, a man, I think. Where are you? A man with something like COPD. That's the power of God working on you, sir. That's the power of Jesus Christ working on you. Praise God. Do you mind, do you mind deliver? Thank you. Have a seat, sir. Now, what's, what's your name and what's the problem? Uh, David, I just um, had, I've had some asthma as a child and COPD is... <laughs> It's the power of God going through your lungs. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Thank you, Jesus. Take deep breath. Thank you, Jesus. Deep breath. Perfect. Perfect. How's that? Perfect. It's absolutely perfect. <laughs> Last night, walking in, I've had lung problems for all my adult life, and I was just huffing and puffing. And so, so tell us about your lung problems. Uh, COPD. Yeah. Uh, oh, COPD. Yeah. And you called for somebody over there who had COPD. I said, me. And uh, I remember I said, there's someone, a man here, and you have something like COPD. Right. And so uh, it was so amazing. It just one breath, I could only breathe shallow. Very next breath, I could breathe all the way, you know, and all day long. I, I, I practically ran back to the car, you know, no, no huffing, no puffing, you know. You know so. so, David, I understand that COPD is not a disease that's curable, that it's, uh, it's a terrible disease that basically the, the lungs, I think, uh, go hard or something. Um, so tell us how it affected your life. How long did you have it? Uh, my whole adult life. You know, when I was younger and playing football and doing things, it was in better control. But the older and, and fatter I got, the worse it got, <laughs> you know. And, and uh, it, it just... Uh, just not the energy and the it affects your drive and just your ability just to focus and do what you what you need to do and and so um you know you think i'm gonna go i'm gonna go play with my grandson oh no i better not you know and and it's just so different now it just feels so great so what happened last night when you were prayed for what did you feel happen well uh, you know it, it was very peaceful just one breath um i couldn't breathe the next breath i could you know yeah so what's it like after, is it 40 years or something, yeah. to be able to breathe? Right. It's, it's amazing. I just look so forward to tomorrow now, you know. Were you on medication? Uh, yeah, the doctor had me on, a, on inhalers and steroids and different things through the years. Yeah. Someone say praise the Lord. So, David, uh, look at the camera. There's someone who's struggling to breathe with asthma. There's someone with COPD and all these diseases of the lungs, cancer of the lungs. What spiritual advice would you give them? Just 
put your faith in Jesus. He loves us and he wants the very, very best for us. You know, he, 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 he always wants to be our healer. How's that breathing? Great, great. Best ever. Yeah. How long did you suffer from what, that and what did you suffer from? I, I always felt like I was only breathing just very little, very shallow. And uh, it's about 20 years now. And uh, I can breathe, fill it all the way down. My diaphragm can breathe completely now. The doctor says I have spots in my lungs. What does it mean, spots in your lungs? I don't know. He just saw two sp spots in my lungs. And he's keeping an eye on them to see if they don't grow. He's checking on them to make sure they don't grow. They left you. They're coming out. They're coming out. They're coming out. Yes? For our granddaughter. She's What's 16. wrong with her? Yeah. She needs a new heart and lungs. Did you hear that? Oh, my goodness. People say, oh, my goodness. Oh, my Jesus. Amen. That's the power of God coming on your granddaughter. You feel that? Yes. That's the power of God coming on the granddaughter. Everyone pray. Everyone pray. Just grab our elbows. Elbows. That's it. That's the power of God going through the granddaughter. That's the Lord moving in the heart. Lord moving in the heart. Now it's the arteries, the arteries around going into the heart that are being healed by the power of Jesus Christ. The lungs are being healed. She can breathe normally and she's well in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Sir, are you security, are you? Hey? Yes. You've been located by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so you're family man? Uh, no, I'm single. So You're single. So you should be married. I should. I should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're all got, what's your name? Brody. I'm Brody. I was at your Dallas meeting with uh, Linda. That's right. Yeah. So we're all going to pray because you should be married. All right? So, <laughs> So we're going to pray, okay? So Father, we release Brody from whatever is hindering your will in his life in Jesus' name and we release his family to him, his wife, his children. Be released in the spiritual realm. There it comes, there it comes, there it comes. Thank you, Lord. Invite me to the wedding, Brody. I will. <laughs> Amen. There might be a few girls who come up after the meeting to talk to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Someone say, praise the Lord. Sorry, Lord. I need to behave myself. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For my friend who has lungs and heart issues. That's the power of God going through her. Okay, that's the power of God going through her. Oh, that's lovely. I believe she's healed. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Was there anyone else? Pastor Tom, we got another Tom behind you, all right? That's the power of God going through your lungs. Is it your lungs? That's what I'm saying. That's power of God going through your lungs, Pastor Tom. presence we your 
That's his power going through you. That's his power going through you. I see the kingdom expanding around you, Pastor Tom, like like waves, the billowing of waves. I see the kingdom expanding. You've got a, a bad disc and it's uh, center a little bit above the center of the back. Where are you? There you are. Can I have a catcher with me? It's not for you, but it's going through someone else. Who else? Lungs, back, yeah, and my foot. What do you feel happening? I don't know. I just, I just need a healing for my son who has an accident and he's in quadriplegic condition right now. Depending on ventilator, and he can move his body. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Tormenting dreams, tormenting dreams, tormenting dreams. Dreams. Hello. Ruth, what's the problem? Uh, <clears throat> well, I had some child trauma and some bad experiences and demon attacks. Okay. Come. God loves you, Ruth. Praise God. Oh, that's the glory. That's the glory, Ruth. <laughs> Thank you, Yeshua, Jesus, amen. Thank you. That's the glory of God going through you. Do you feel that? Yes. <laughs> what does that feel like? Oh, feels good. <laughs> Thank you, Yeshua. It's a little bit of a quiet night, but it'll heat up. Turn to your neighbor and say, it'll heat up. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Come, let's talk to you. Come on. There we go. What do you want Jesus to do for you? Um, just overall strength. So a few family problems? Um. My daughter uh, is just having problems with panic attacks and anxiety. Your mother? Yes. Tell me about your mother, because she suffers mental illness, your mother? Yes. Alcoholism. She had, she had suicidal episodes or something? Uh, I, yeah, she's very unstable. So it's a generational curse, okay? Very much so. Everyone reach out your hands. What's your name? Eva. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, praise God. You believe that Jesus will do this? Yes. Because your daughter knows about Jesus, is that right? Yes. But she just needs deliverance. So Jesus breathed on them, breath 
is a resource of heaven to bring God's power. So when I see the demon, I shoot it. (laughs) Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you standing up for a reason? Asthma. Asthma. Come on, Jeff, be quick. We're going to go around and just ask you what happened last night. Something special happened or in a previous meeting. Just put your hand up. We'd like to hear what happened. Well, I had spirits in me. Tell us about how the demons affected you. Well, they tormented my mind. I thought very negative about my father and my family. And I was very hurt and confused. And I said, where did I open this door? And I went to a place to get some healing. And I opened up the door. And what was ever on the other person, it came on me. And then I knew, oh, my goodness. I'm like, they didn't put the spirits anywhere. I just opened up a door and everything flooded in into me like a sponge. So we really need to be careful. So last night, um, what happened? Tell us from the beginning last night. Well, last night you looked me right in the eyes and you seen everything that was going on. And no spirit says I do everything to her. You asked them what were they doing there and you said, and I said, I remember everything. I was going through so much torment. But this has been going on, you know. So last night, um, what was, what did I say to you? You said, how long have you been there? And the spirit, and that you looked right into me, like, and the spirits, like, were, like, running, and, like, they were hiding in me. I felt like they got scared. (laughs) They were trying to get away. (laughs) So the spirits were hiding. Yeah, but you made them come forth. You had them come forth with the Holy Spirit of God inside of you, Jesus. You know, the the spirits hate the light, and they'll look for a place in someone's body to go hiding. Yeah. And then what happened? And then uh, I fell on the floor and I started feeling like they were coming out of me. They started leaving me. And then I felt like I was being like surgery and laughing and I was praying with the blood of Jesus. And I kept and I kept on feeling more come out. I was on the floor for a half hour or maybe even longer. Was I on there longer? And I was being dealt with. I mean, the spirits were being dealt with inside of me. And um, and I just kneeled after I, I, I said, is it is it done yet? And then the, the Lord says, no. So I stayed there and just kept on verbally speaking about deliverance, the love of God, uh, Abba Father, and the blood of Jesus, and I'm healed. And I started speaking. How are you today? I started speaking in tongues. Oh, I went to church this morning and I got so much healing again. I came back tonight. My dad was willing to drive all the way out here. My dad needs a lot of healing too. I'm so grateful because I was praying for my family. How are you today? I feel fantastic. That's why I'm here. The Lord brought me back. The Lord brought me back for... Love you guys. Come on, ma'am. What's your name? I'm Vera. Vera, welcome. Is it healing, blessing, deliverance? My husband yesterday was blessed for, and he has stage four cancer. Mm-hmm. He had, <laughs> but the Lord is healing him. And today was the first time that he didn't have pain. Wow. He woke up without pain, and I'm very thankful to the Lord. And I believe in healing for everybody that has this disease. Amen. You know, everything's easy for the Lord. Right. Everything. The Lord is good. What's your name again? Vera. Vera. Have some more, Vera. Praise God. Anyone else? Come on, sister and brother. You can both come. Run, run down. Mary Vaughn. So uh, what's it about? And Daniel. Yes. So yesterday you touched me while I was there. And hmm, I was feeling like, I don't know. Like how you're feeling now? Yeah, like I, my head, like something, I, like I want to faint, like something was doing my head. I Even when I went out, because we, were, we had to be going out, because you, you kept saying that the power come, of God come is, on, come on, come on. Ooh, you kept saying that the power of God is touching myself and this boy. And when I, I had to go sit, I had to take Uber, but I had to go sit down out there in the lodge for a moment. I called my husband, because we are from Maryland. I told him that, oh, my head, I feel, because when you were, coming to touch us. I was just 
with eyes closed, picturing a man in white, touching myself and my son. And so um, I had to sit for a while. We went home, and in the morning when I opened the hotel windows, the first thing my son said was, um, is this sunny? Ooh, I was, uh, like, I was like, okay. <laughs> because he normally doesn't just say things. He, you have to say, like Daniel say this, or the only things he will say is, okay, I want to eat, I want to drink, but he doesn't. So, so what's the problem with your son? He was diagnosed with autism and ADHD. So, so, so you wake up in the morning and he says, is it sunny? Windows, yes. It was like, is this sunny? I was like, yeah, it is sunny. I was like, yes, it is sunny. I was so, I was like, yeah, it is sunny, boy. And he normally makes some horrible sounds that just gets me, oh my God, like I can just... But then today he did make some of those sounds, but not as much as he always does, like... Praise God. So I know that Jesus touched him yesterday and all night yesterday I was just thinking on the scriptures about healing of how healing is a children's bread and that Jesus. That's the healing power of Jesus shining on him right now. That's the healing power of Jesus shining on the boy right now. Just show the boy. That's the healing power of Jesus on him right now. That's the power of God on him right now. That's the Lord touching his brain, reorganizing his brain in Jesus' name. Amen. Who's healing your son? Who is healing your son? Amen. His name is Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Daniel, you Someone say praise God. <laughs> You've got to understand that um, we've, by God's grace, we've seen many children healed of autism and we've seen this type of, that, this progress, 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 you know. So we, we look beyond and we give thanks to God. Amen. I watched a lot of testimonies. For some reason, I felt like you were specialized with, in autism healings because... Jesus specializes with everything. Yes, sir. Amen. So I searched up on YouTube and I saw tons of testimonies about people being healed, Jesus touching them and their brain being restored. And I, I told my husband, like, oh my God, God is doing wonders through this man of God. And he was like, sure, then let's take, take the boy there, take him there and Jesus will touch him and I'm so grateful. So tomorrow there'll be more. When you get up in the morning, there'll be more because the Lord's touching him. Praise God. Anyone else? We can't hear you, so just come over. So your insulin pump broke. It broke. I was, I was in the pool and it had a crack and it leaked and I went to the hospital just an hour, two hours ago and they gave me new insulin. They gave me new insulin and it's, it won't go down. I've got to either go back to the emergency room. I've got to go back. Jesus, have mercy on me. That's the power of God on you. That's the power of God on you. Everyone pray. That's the power of God on you. There you go. There you go. There you go. It's happening, sir. It's happening. It's happening. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You know, there's order in the meeting, but then there's people like the Zacchaeus and the blind man who called out, and God loves that disorder. Amen. What's your name? Les. Les. Les, what's it about? Healing, deliverance, blessing? Um, for my daughter, we had prayer. And um, she has lots of issues, but we prayed for her digestive issues. And then... So what's, what was wrong with her? Uh, so she had really bad constipation. We had to get her medications and stuff. How long had that been going on for? Um, probably since she was born. How old is she now? Eight. Is she here? Yes. Where, where is she? Oh, she's lying down. Okay. So she had digestive... So just show the, the girl. There we go. Hello, sweetie. So she's had digestive issues of constipation since she was born. Yes. And what happened last night? Was she prayed for? She was prayed for by Gloria. Mm -hmm. 
and um, she woke up this morning and used the bathroom without medication. And then today at church and worship, I asked the Lord if he healed her, and he said, yes, my daughter. So she went to the toilet without medication. Who healed her? Jesus. Praise God. She's a sweetie, isn't she? Amen. Anyone else want to share? What's your name? Ivan. Ivan, what happened? Last night when we was praying, uh, Pastor Brian, I guess, he, he was praying for me. And for about 23 years, I have severe heartburns. And he started commanding them. I have them daily. I have them from sunrise to sunset. They never stop. Sometimes they come in right to my mouth. Sometimes they're in my mouth. And I have to spit the acids out. But today, the whole day, not even once. Wow. <laughs> Who healed you? Jesus. Ivan, there's someone there. They've got problems, digestive problems. Look at the camera. What spiritual advice would you give them? Jesus is the answer. Amen. Yes. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Asperges, come out in Jesus' name. Just close your eyes. I'm talking to you. Come out. In Jesus' name. I believe you're okay. In January, I randomly started Googling, has anybody been healed of autism? Not realiz realizing at the time that I might have been autistic at the time. <laughs> um, so it wasn't until about last week that... Um, my wife and I have been married 18 years, and it's been really, really hard. And if you know anything about uh, an autistic marriage with a, a neural typical, I think they call them, <laughs> they've got about an 80% divorce rate. <laughs> and we had a really, really hard marriage. And she sent me an article uh, a few days ago going, hey, I think you might have Asperger's. And, and it like clicked in my head. Um, that not, although not officially diagnosed, I, I think I had it. <laughs> and then you prayed for me last night. Um, so what happened last night? Last night when you prayed for me, um, you said you said you felt or saw a spirit lift off of me, and you believed that I was healed. Um, I didn't feel anything in the moment, but as soon as you stepped away, I felt vibrating in my chest and in my head, and. The entire drive home, I felt like I was floating. <laughs> and my head has been so clear the last 24 hours. So you're the wife. What's your name? My name is Cassie. 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 Okay. So what was your husband like with Asperger's? Um, he just wasn't there. Um, he's also a firefighter, so I thought maybe it was because he had some PSD or something like that. But it was just like I married him, and it was like he just wasn't there. So it's been really lonely. And the, and the, worst, the worst part was I blamed her. I blamed her for most everything. <laughs> so, but this morning, um, my kids woke up, and they were like, Mom. I was like, how's, like, how's Dad doing? Because I can just feel a difference. And they go, Mom, Dad hugged us this morning, and he said he loved us. And all day, he's just been, like, talking. I'm like, I think I've heard you talk more today than I ever have in our marriage. So I loved him before. Like, it never has changed my love for him. But, I like, he has longed for God for so long, and he never could feel God. And I was like, just something was off. And so I'm glad that God put together the pieces. <laughs> He's feeling more of God right now. What's happening right now is being filled with the Holy Spirit. He's being filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't mind if God gives you a new man? No. Because <laughs> you are going to go through an adjustment because this man is going to be different. Brian, what's happening? You know, I just feel peace. Praise God. Praise God. Let's pray for you, all right? So he said you had a problem? Um, he blamed me a lot for, I mean, I, I was, I've been frustrated. Hang on, let's start again. Michael's trying to find his position. 
I've been frustrated and I have not dealt with the anger very well. And so this last year, I had a lot of deliverance. Okay, well, well, here we go. Okay. That's, that's God's power setting you free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Josh um, said that when I was praying for him last night, his, his heart was jumping up and down with joy. And he's creative, and that he said that the Lord told him, there's more. Wow. What did you feel last night? We wept. Refreshed. Refreshed. Praise God, Josh. We rejoice with you. Let's pray for you some more. How's that, Josh? It's amazing. Amazing. Oh. Jesus is my king. Jesus is my king. Jesus is my king. Amen. Amen. Anyone else want to share? And the healing power of Jesus Christ is going through you all. Now just believe it and receive it right now. There's someone who suffered from mental illness as you are praying for one another. The power of Jesus Christ is healing that person. Kidneys are being healed right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, let your power flow. Lord, let your power flow. Let your power flow. In Jesus' name. That's the glory of God going through, going through, going through. I see abdomen, organs being healed in Jesus' name. Diabetes being healed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Someone with uh, problems in their head. Thank you, Lord. Chronic migraines, throbbing head being healed right now. High blood pressure. Throbbing, throbbing head from high blood pressure being healed right now in Jesus' name. Listen, someone, their feet... Problems with your feet being healed right now. Power of God's going through your feet right now. Right now. Someone with this pain in their lower back being healed. The deterioration of the spine, lower back, spine. Your neck is being healed right now. Power of God going through your neck. Power of God's going through the room. Power of God's going through the room in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Reproductive organs, fallopian tubes being healed right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's a, a man here. You struggle with work, finding work, and just hindrance after hindrance. In Jesus' name, your way is open. In Jesus' name, let your way be open right now. Thank you, Lord. Someone with a spirit of poverty, spirit is cause debt, spirit of debt, be released from that in Jesus' name. Always, all your life you've been in debt. Be released from that. That is the gold of heaven coming down and visiting you right now. Be released of that in Jesus' name. Power of God, power of God, power of God going through you right now. Thank you, Lord. Arthritis, get out. Arthritis, get out of the hands. Out of the hands, out of the bones. Arthritis, get out right now in Jesus' name. If you feel the power of God going through you, just give Jesus a wave. You feel the power of God going through you, just... That's right, just lift your hand, give Jesus a wave. Power of God's going through you, right through the room, people. Under the power of God, under the power of God, Jesus Christ is healing you. Thank you, Lord. Someone with painful shins, the, your legs, be healed. Your bones, be healed in Jesus' name. Eyesight problems, be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Deafness, spirit of deafness come out in G There it goes, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Someone, deaf, deaf, dullness of hearing. Ears are opening up right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. A, a father with a daughter and broken relationship, a lot of tension, bitterness, bitterness. Jesus Christ is healing that relationship. Only God could heal that relationship. It's being healed right now in Jesus Christ's name. Young lady, you've always desired to sing in the choir. Be released into your destiny. You prayed and prayed. Be released into your destiny. Thank you, Lord. 
young man and you've always you've had you got this desire i want to prophesy i want to prophesy receive the gift of prophecy in jesus name he's also given you the opportunity the opportunity will come your way just out in the shops or whatever you'll begin prophesying thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord hallelujah Amen. amen praise god Anyone else want to share? Anyone else want to share a blessing? Come on, why haven't you shared? Huh? Everyone say, why haven't you shared? <laughs> you know, God blesses you to glorify Him. Amen? Yes, yes, yes. If we can't start in the house of God, where do we start? Amen? Yes, amen. What was the problem? Okay, I had a plantar fasciitis. Uh, um, plantar fasciitis. Yes. What's that? Um, and it was in my heel, um, and I had it for a year, almost a year. And last night, when I came, I said to Lord... Oh, just, Holy Spirit's doing something. Kira, just stand up. I was talking to Kira about going to Europe, so with us. This is her second tour with us. That's the power I got on you, Kira. He's doing something. Praise God. Receive it. an impartation. There you go. Praise the Lord. Okay, keep going. And I told to God, uh, I'm tired of this pain, Lord. Heal me. And when you touch me, uh, just you, when you came to the stage and uh, and just flow the air, I feel a uh, like peace. And uh, oh, I blew on you, did I? Yes. yes. <laughs> like that, huh? Yes. And, and what happened? And it was like a fresh air from heaven, and I feel peace, and I fell down on a chair. And today, when I woke up, there wasn't any pain. So far, no pain. What do you mean, so far? It's finished. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Praise God. And um, all day, no pain. And I, I think it was like a renewing my he heel. Amen. You know, I just want to say, you, you don't need a long prayer, do you, David? You just, one moment he couldn't breathe properly, next moment he can breathe. You don't need a long prayer. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later. But people think that for a miracle to happen, you have to work hard at it. It's not true. You know, I asked the Lord, I said to the Lord, how do you do this where... One moment, someone's like we saw someone with a um, six-inch, I think it was, fibroid, and the next moment it was gone. And the Lord said to me, it's just like, you know, you have a photo album, you just turn the page and you look at a different photo. You just turn the page. You don't have to work hard. Amen? Amen. 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 Glory. Praise God. Can we, can we get you out of the way, Tom? Yeah, well, we'll be all right for a moment. If, <laughs> he, he's a wonderful guy, you know, praise God. I mustn't talk to him, he's in work mode. All right, what's your name? Anne Margaret. Anne Margaret. Okay, what's it about? I just want to praise God for the deliverance from cancer yesterday. So what sort of cancer was it? Um, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer, but they wanted to do a PET scan, and I said, no, I'm healed in Jesus' name. And that was in 2019, and I haven't gone back. So what happened last night? Where's the cancer? Everywhere. <laughs> Come over here. <coughs> Look at me. The mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of cancer, Come out. Come out. The mighty name of Jesus. Put your hand on your chest. Loose yourself. Loose yourself. Look, we love the person, but we hate the demon that's killing them. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? It's coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. The power of God. It was bam, bam, wow. And I was on the floor. <laughs> And then I was just, I was out, I was out for like an hour and then I had a hard time getting up and then I was laughing with the lady over there that was on the floor and, and then I was walking out of the parking lot and I was like, 
Lord Jesus, help me. And I got home and I was like in the spirit and I've been in the spirit all day. <laughs> I've been listening to you all day and I just praise God. I just love you so much. Someone say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 2, and I thought they were drunk. (laughs) Title of the message is, It's Not By Might. It's Not By Might. I was preaching in Adelaide. And a man came up to me before the service and we were doing our tech setup. And he said to me, pray for me, I want an impartation, something like that. Uh, Impartation, I want the Holy Spirit. I said, sir, we're busy. You can wait for the service and we'll pray for you. He said, no, I've got to go somewhere. I said, sorry, sir. So later I found out that that particular man had gone to a rock concert. He couldn't come to the service because he wanted to go to a rock concert. There's something wrong there. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I want to talk about walking in his strength, walking in the life of the spirit, walking in the power of Jesus one of the great keys is personal death because the flesh actively works against the spirit and the Holy Spirit fights the flesh so the way to live walk have your being in the anointing, in the Holy Spirit, one of the great keys is daily death to the flesh. Shall we go? Come on, let's go. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer, everyone say no longer, I who lives. Turn to your neighbour and say, guess what? I'm dead. It's no longer I who lives. You're dead. You're dead. But Christ who lives in me and the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Romans 8, 5. For those who live according to their flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. The flesh is not only the sinful part of you, but the flesh works through everything that's sensory, what you see, you hear, you feel, smell, so on, okay? So the flesh is focused on the natural realm, whereas the spirit is focused on the heavenly realm. So the flesh is, I read in the paper that inflation's getting worse. House prices are going, mortgage loans, interest rates are going up. I'm worried, I'm stressed. You see, the flesh works through what you see and you hear, okay? For those who live according to the flesh set their minds, everyone say minds, on the things of the flesh. Okay? Get behind me, Satan, Jesus said to Peter, for you do not have in mind the things of God, but of man. So Satan will use the things of the natural world that you would focus on that. Okay. But those who live according to the Spirit think about the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. 
So the person who's not strong in the Lord are carnally minded, almost always. They're thinking about the things of the world. And, you know, we can live our lives directed by the Holy Spirit. And we can live our lives in peace. And we can live our lives with hope and faith in him. That's the spirit life. But the carnal mind is carnally minded. It's fear, anxiety, doubt, apprehensive. What if? What if? Hallelujah. When you approach the challenges of life, because Jesus said, in this life you will have tribulation. In this life you will have problems. He never promised you no problems because problems are good for you. When you approach problems, you can approach them as an overcomer because we are seated in the heavenly places. We're not under the problem, we're over the problem because the word of God makes us overcomers. By his stripes we are healed. The light has shone and the darkness could not comprehend it. So the problems in life, the carnally minded person sees it with worry and fear. My neighbour used to say to me, my neighbour used to say to me, oh, you can't go there. I think I was going to Turkey. They'll kill you. You know, the carnally minded person is, oh, you know. But there's peace when you're directed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity, is at war against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So you cannot live in the spirit if you're choosing to walk in the flesh. Now... Much of the church in the West has stopped preaching repentance. The result of that is that the church can't live in the spirit. Because the church, if, if repentance is not preached, the church will not know what it means to be carnally minded. And the church will suffer death. Because the wages of sin is death but the free gift of God is eternal life. I've seen many blessings in my life, but one of the great blessings was when the Holy Spirit revealed to me what sin was. I never knew. My mentor who's been gone to be with the Lord, Bill Sabritsky, went to be with the Lord at 90. When I was in my 20s, I read his Sin and Occult list And I thought, I never knew that was sin. I'm doing that one. I'm doing that one. You know? And it was such a blessing to know the difference between dark and light. Between darkness and light. To know the difference. And, you know, why do people get into bondage to Satan, tormented by demons? Very often because they don't know what sin is. They'll go and see someone who reads a palm reader, you know, because they don't know that when they open their palm, they're going to get a demon. They don't know these things. So many Christians are still sick because they don't know that there's a healer, that Jesus heals because the church has told them that he doesn't heal anymore, that the dispensation of the gifts and the apostles and so on is finished and God, God's up there and we're here and too bad. So, but repentance, to deal, crucify the flesh. So, Galatians 6, 7 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. He who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit, everyone say the Spirit, 
will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So when you sow to the Spirit, then there's life. You can walk in the Spirit by sowing to the Spirit. How do we sow to the Spirit? Well, we say no to the flesh. We say yes to Jesus. Amen. But so many Christians, they got one foot in the world because it's their culture. So one foot in the world and one foot in church. They, let's be real. They go to church and they're one type of person and in the world, they're another type of person. And they don't realise that they're sowing to the flesh corruption or death and they're stealing from themselves and then they wonder why they can't walk in the life and the peace of the Holy Spirit because they're sowing and reaping in the enemy's territory. Because the Son of Man was manifested to destroy the works of the enemy. What is the work of the enemy? The context for that verse is sin. The enemy wants to divide you from the light through sin. So you have to be absolutely ruthless with the flesh. Hallelujah. Because heaven is worth it. Heaven is worth it. He who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Deal with it. Deal with it. Turn to your neighbour and say, I'm talking to you. Deal with it. Some of you may never have thought about this. How does the spirit of the world operate? The Bible talks about the spirit of the world. How does it operate? The spirit of the world operates through worldly things. You turn on secular music, you watch porn, you watch horror movies. The spirit of the world operates through it. When you're watching, that spirit can come in. It operates through worldly stuff. Let me give an example. Last week in LA, a lady and her mother are there and she says, my sister committed suicide. Okay. I said to her, you have a problem with your esophagus. Is that right? She said, yes. I said, do you know why you have a problem with your esophagus? It's because of of you are watching stuff in the dark side. She said, yes, that's true. I watch horror movies. I said, okay. When you watch people being bludgeoned to death and being murdered and so on, a spirit came into you, afflicted your esophagus and killed your sister. I said, are you going to stop watching horror movies now? She said, yes. People don't understand how serious it is. The spirit of the world operates through the world. You think, oh, I'll just watch this. I'm just chilling out, relaxing. I had a hard day at work. Uh, I want to have a break from my studies. And you don't realise that you are opening, as a Christian, you are opening your life to the enemy to afflict you. God is light. The Holy Spirit shines light. The Holy Spirit works to expose darkness. A true prophet will shine light on your sin. Hello. When you look and listen to works of darkness, you're filling your eyes, your ears, your soul, your body with darkness. And then you wonder why you can't walk in the anointing, walk in the spirit, why you're not strong in the spirit, because you're undermining your own spiritual life. What you sow, you'll reap. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is full on. Hallelujah. (laughs) 
When you participate in sin and the things of the flesh and darkness, you listen to secular music, you, you watch all sorts of rubbish and stuff, you listen to, you watch soaps on TV and gossip and all this sort of stuff. You, and you justify it, the effect of that is that you won't be able to help others in their sin. Because you justify your own sin, you won't be able to see Because of a log in your own eye, you won't be able to see the splinter in the other person's eye because you're blinded. You will not have discernment because you're justifying your sin. 1 Corinthians 2.9 It is written, Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. We talked yesterday about the spirit of revelation. You block revelation of your destiny, of the good things that God has for you through your involvement in darkness. But God has revealed them to us, things that eye has not seen. Incredible things that God has prepared before you were born. He wants to reveal them to you, but you block your sight, your ears from hearing what he has for you because of your involvement in the world. Run from the world into the arms of Jesus. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. You can't even be born again without the Holy Spirit. You can't move, you can't do anything without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows the deep things of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. When you die to the flesh, you immediately enter into the Spirit of Revelation and you will know the things that are freely given to us by God. You know, before you open your Bible, I encourage you to say, Holy Spirit, talk to me. Reveal to me the riches of heaven because they're right here. The treasures of heaven. Open my eyes that I might see the glory of the word of God. Amen. It's all the treasures of heaven are here. They've been revealed. Praise God. The mysteries of God are revealed by the Holy Spirit in the word of God. Amen. Praise God. There's life in the spirit. And John the Baptist saw Jesus coming and he said, I indeed baptise you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I. Mightier than I. There is power in the Holy Spirit whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you walk simply in the natural, you, you're walking in your own abilities. But when you die to yourself, then you come into the strength of God. Hallelujah. Far more can be achieved in the anointing than with any ability you have. Far more can be achieved. When you put your trust in God, he will show you what he can do. Hallelujah. 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 What I'm really saying is trust him absolutely. Your faith will place an obligation on God to move. Zacchaeus climbed a tree to see Jesus. His faith put an obligation on Jesus. And Jesus said to him, today I must eat with you. Hallelujah. Put yourself in a place of total dependence on God and see what he will do. 
Amen. You know, the anointing rests on Jesus. He has the power. Everyone say, he has the power. Wow. He has the power. He is the anointed one. So instead of thinking, I have this gift, I have this ministry, I have this anointing, why not think about him? Because he's the giver of good gifts. He's the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. If you touch his garment, you will be healed. See what I'm saying? He is the anointed one. So when you make it about yourself, he's like, okay, you go ahead and you do it. See how well you go. But when you make it about Jesus, wow, he comes. He is all powerful, all glorious. See what he can do. Amen. Amen. To walk in the spirit is to die to self and to live for him. Stop following your own ideas and follow Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, just follow him. Go on, just follow him. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who oppress. He closed the book, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today, This scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Hallelujah. 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 When you're praying, I'm assuming everyone prays for people, okay? When when you're praying for people or you're doing a meeting or you're on the streets, relax. Most Christians try too hard. Relax. Jesus does the work. So my goal in these meetings is to relax and do as I'm told. It's his responsibility. One of the first people I ever prayed for, I was preaching in a little church and I was talking about miracles even though I hadn't seen many. And a lady was lying. It was a church with pews and a lady was lying on the pew. And I thought she's asleep, she's bored. But she was thinking about her husband who had died recently. She was thinking about how she had chronic back pain and couldn't sit and she'd been in a car accident. And when you look at the outside, you never know what's going on sometimes. So anyway, she gets her walking frame. She shuffles up to me and wants healing. And I'm like, God, I can't help this woman. I talk about miracles, but Lord, I don't know what to do. And the Lord said to me, it's not your responsibility to heal. So you can just relax. It's not your responsibility to heal. He said to me, just obey me. I thought, wow, that's easy. Well, this lady is not my responsibility. I'll just obey the Lord. So you can relax. And then the Lord said to me, she's got a problem in the house. There's sin in the house. Ask her about that. You see, just follow the agenda of Jesus, okay? So I said, oh, what's going on in your house? There's a problem there. She said, oh, yes, I've got some people in there that shouldn't be there. I said, you want to repent? She said, yes. She repented, and then she coughed. And somehow I knew by the Holy Spirit that she'd just been delivered. The power of God came on her. She set aside her walking frame and was completely healed. And she got back in touch with me and told me that her hair was frizzed. It was curled by the power of God. (laughs) And it was a wonderful lesson that it's not our responsibility to heal or deliver. It's the anointing that does it. And the anointing is on Jesus. Amen. So the one thing I seek when I come into a meeting is Jesus. Because if he's here, everything's all right. Amen.
So in life, you can relax and put your trust in Jesus. Faith is rest. Turn to your neighbor and say, just relax, it's okay. Jesus is here. What Jesus says, he will do. What Jesus says, he will do. So when God gives you an accurate word or prophecy, just rest in him. He will do it. Shall I tell you a funny story? We've, we've got it on YouTube. There's two people in a meeting, Abraham and Suzanne. And uh, Holy Spirit locates Abraham. He's not a Christian. He's Chinese visiting some relatives in Auckland. So he's come from China, I think. And I said, what's your problem? He said, I'm lonely. All right, I said, we're going to pray for a good wife for you. So then after that, the Lord gives a prophecy. There's someone here, a woman with a flow of blood. You're bleeding. The woman was there, but she didn't want to stand up and say, that's my problem. But another lady, Suzanne, thought to herself, I'll take the blessing. So she stood up. I said, you got this problem? She said, no, I don't have a problem, but I'll take the blessing. <laughs> so I said to her, what's your problem, Suzanne? She said, I'm lonely. And the Lord said to me, Abraham will be your husband. <laughs> so I said to her, Suzanne, I didn't say Abraham was going to be your husband. I said, Suzanne, let's pray. So we prayed. So I'm resting in what God's telling me, right? Abraham will be a husband. So there's a lady sitting in the meeting and she has a vision. She sees Abraham and Suzanne together. So she thought, I'm going to do some matchmaking. <laughs> so after the meeting, she knows both of them, she invites Abraham and Suzanne to a family get-together. So Suzanne is no interest in Abraham, but she, Suzanne and Abraham get together and they're concerned for his soul because he's not saved. So they all hold hands together and they're praying for him. So Suzanne's not in Abraham, but she's holding his hand and she's praying for him. She's still concerned for his soul, so she begins to text him Bible verses in China, to China, right? So time goes by and I get this email from Suzanne. She says, will you bless our marriage? We're getting married. So I was in Auckland. I went to their wedding and did the wedding blessing. Amen? Amen. So what did I do about the prophecy? God told me, this is Abraham's wife. Oh, and Abraham received the Lord too. And Abraham fulfilled her checklist of everything that she wanted. So what did I do about the prophecy? I did nothing. But God spoke to someone else, did the matchmaking, brought them together, saved him, did everything. So relax. When you're in the Holy Spirit, when you're walking in the Spirit, he's quite capable of doing everything. All you have to do is what he tells you. Turn to your neighbour and say, just do as he tells you. It's that simple. <clears throat> For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. Last night I said to Pastor Tom, I see the kingdom of God expanding. So I'm going to leave Pastor Tom and I'm going to go off to Salt Lake City and start preaching there. And I'm trusting God that he's going to get back to me whenever he wants to. He's going to say, the kingdom of God is expanding. See, I'm trusting God that he, he will bring the prophecy to pass. So in the Holy Spirit, we just rest. So when you're praying for people, sometimes you, you work too hard. Last night, we saw people being instantly healed and I didn't do anything because I come up to them and the Lord says they're healed. I go, okay, how are you? The pain's gone. You all witness that. So, you know, you try too hard. Hallelujah. For years and years and years, I tried to grow my church. I was in Liverpool, Sydney, Australia. 
you know, giving out flyers, inviting people, calling people and everything. All right. So, and the ch- church numbers went up and down. And then I left the church and the Lord called me into itinerant ministry. And um, then in 2017, I think it was, I'd gone through divorce, nervous breakdown, stage four cancer, and I was starting to feel better. So, <laughs> so I was starting to feel better. So the Lord says to me one day, Mark, you're feeling better. I said, yes, Lord, I'm feeling better now. And he said to me, is it okay if I grow the ministry? For years and years, I've been praying and trying. But he says, is it okay if I grow the ministry? I said, Lord, whatever you want to do. Like, like I'm totaled. You know, life has just trampled me. And Lord, if you want to do it, that's fine. So I said, Lord, go ahead. Uh, and I didn't do anything. So then he takes a video of a child, about a six-year-old girl, and this little girl says, I want to see Jesus. She goes down under the power of the Holy Spirit. She comes up and describes heaven and how she saw Jesus. So he takes that video and touches it. I'd never heard of a viral video, but that video has approximately 600,000 views. He touched it and he just expanded the ministry and I didn't do anything. He is able. He is more than able. Amen. So 1 Corinthians 1.25, the foolishness of God is wiser than men. The foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is smarter than you. And he's stronger than you. When you make yourself weak before God, that's when he will show his power. When you make yourself weak and dependent on God, rather than being self-confident, self-reliant, and full of yourself, and positive thinking, and all the things that you can do, but if you will humble yourself before God and rely upon Him, He will show His greatness and might on behalf of the humble. Amen. Positive thinking is a dark shadow of the gift of faith. Positive thinking is not biblical. Cursed is the man who trusts in man who makes flesh his arm. Praise God. So your challenges and problems in life, even if they come from the pit of hell, are an opportunity to be strong in the spirit. Because when I am weak, he is strong. Amen. Amen. So thank God for your problems. Paul says he had a thorn in the flesh. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Some of you are asking God to take things from you that he's allowed you to have, that you might grow in him, that you might achieve his destiny in your life that you would never have the godly foundation in Christ without those problems. You want your destiny without problems and it doesn't work that like that. Trials in life perfect your character. And he said to me, my grace, the primary meaning of grace is power to those in need. In the New Testament. My grace, my power is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I'm not saying that God doesn't supply healing for the sick. He does. Promises of God are there. But he was saying, I thank God for all my problems. Turn to your neighbour and say, I'm thankful to the Lord for all my problems. (laughs) 
Therefore I take pleasure. Paul says, I take pleasure in infirmities, reproaches, needs, persecutions, distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. Praise God. It's not, you know, strength in the Lord is when you know how weak you are and you just depended on him. Amen. Praise God. I don't want to rob you, so I want to finish with Galatians 5. Um, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, the Spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one another, so that you not, do not do the things that you wish. But, you are led, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. So this, I want to read this list because when I read it 30 years ago, it changed my life. The works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, which is sex outside of a husband and wife, uncleanness, lewdness, which is pornography, idolatry is anything that you love more than Jesus, sorcery, any type of witchcraft, watching Harry Potter, entertaining yourself with books and movies about, about witchcraft. Okay, this is a work of the flesh. Hatred, contentions. You know some people, they're always causing problems in the church. Pastor Tom, you got any people who cause trouble in your church? Come up here and tell me about them. <laughs> who are they? You need to repent. Contentious people. It's a work of the flesh. Some people are always causing arguments. Why don't you just get on with the gospel? Amen. Instead of causing problems for pastors. Jealousies, outbursts of anger. Selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, is anything that denies the word of God. You, you, people who say that God doesn't heal today, that's a heresy. God doesn't deliver, it's a heresy. Envy, murders, what's murder? Abortion, drunkenness, any type of addiction, okay, drug addiction. Revelries, that's party spirit and the like, of which I tell you beforehand just as I also told you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot practice the flesh and think you're walking in the spirit. The two are opposed to one another. And those who walk in the spirit have eternal life. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. I want you to talk to Jesus and tell him the works of your flesh. Okay? Confess your sins. Repent. For he is faithful and just and will forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Some of you will be healed just confessing your sins. Some of you will be delivered just confessing your sins. On YouTube, some of you are being healed and delivered as you repent, as you forgive, forgive, forgive. Some of you have held years of resentment and unforgiveness and bitterness. You just, you just won't let go of that memory of what that person said or did. Now forgive. Lord, forgive me for hatred, unforgiveness watching horror movies and porn and gossiping about people and cold shoulder I give to someone, unbelief that I have towards certain situations. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord, for being contentious, causing trouble for the leaders in my church. Forgive me, Lord. I repent. I repent. As you humble yourself, the Holy Spirit will come upon your life. And you'll be strong in him. And the Holy Spirit will come and apply the blood of Jesus Christ and wash away your sin. 
Praise God. Some of you have got selfish ambition. You're always too busy for God. When God calls you, says, come and do this, come and spend time with me, you've got these ambitions in life. He can do far more with your life by spending time in the word and prayer than you could ever achieve on your own. If you would honour him, he would honour you and bless your life. Believe me, it's true. Thank you, Lord. So just repent. He loves you. He wants a loving relationship. He's your father in heaven. If you don't know him, open your heart to him. Say, Lord, forgive me. Wash me clean. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence in this place. Thank you, Lord, for your word that edifies our faith and that builds us up. Thank you, Jesus. It's your will to heal, to deliver, that by your stripes we are healed. At Calvary, you provided for our healing. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit, for bringing the promise of the word of God that there's healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, we thank you for your presence here and we give you all the glory, all the honour for what you're going to do. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hello. Hi. What do you want from the Lord? Heal for um, pain for my joints and my hips. and my That's the power of God going through you. That's the power of God going through you. Power of God going through you. Power of God going through you. Thank you, Lord. Okay, I think you're all right now. I believe you're all right. Move your joints, whatever. Move them. How's that? It feels better. Thank you. It feels better. You're healed in Jesus' name. Power of God going through your gut. I'm, I'm trying to understand what I'm seeing about you. you but you're a spiritual man, you're a man of mystery. Um, but with, with, with destiny, with ability um, in the kingdom of God. Okay? So I'm seeing, I'm sp- seeing like a spiritual soldier. Okay? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Pancreas. Where's your pancreas? Right there. That's the power of God going into it, okay? Amen. Run out of catches, I think. God bless you. Power of God going through your heart. Power of God going through your heart. Power of God going through your heart. You ready? Yes. Yes. You've been waiting a long time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You want prayer? Oh. God bless you. You're in a bad place. <laughs> Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where's the cancer? Oh, it was in my head and the uh, CT. It's power God going through you. Hallucinations, schizophrenia, suicidal thoughts, blind left eye. Thank you, Lord. Angela, God loves you. Enemy's a liar. He's years old. He barely speaks. His mind is of a, like a toddler. 
Thank you, Jesus. I think the preacher preached a long time tonight, eh? Power God going through you, Jonathan. I see change. I see change. So where's Daddy and Mummy? Does she have a problem with anger? Yes. Yes. Uh, and she's watching a device or TV a lot. Yes, she she does watch a lot of the YouTube. TikTok. TikTok. Yes, TikTok. You should watch our channel on TikTok. <laughs> okay. Put your hand on her head. So the Lord's setting her free from the spirit that causes the anger. In Jesus' name, command you out of her. Never again return. And we break the addiction to TikTok and the other channels. We loose you in Jesus' name. What's wrong with your left knee? Um, No cartilage. That's the power of God going through it, Joanne. That's the power of God going through it. Okay, move it. How's that? Feels good. Jesus healed you. Just put your hands out towards the autistic boy. Can you film the boy, please? Just put your hands out towards him. That's the power I got on him. Where's the arthritis, Susan? Somewhere. It's the power I got going through the mum and the boy. Where is it? It's my hands and my hands. Turning. That's the power I got going through you. Okay, I'm going to tap you, right? There goes the tinnitus coming out in Jesus' name. That's power got on you, Ruth. Power got on you. Okay, move your right shoulder up. That's good. Feels good. Power got on your right leg. It's power got on your Debbie. Power got on you, Debbie. Power got on you. What does that feel like, Debbie? (laughs) It's getting stronger. It's getting stronger. Where's the cancer, Pam? My kidney, my lungs, my back, my bones. God loves you, Gloria. God loves you. How long have you been married? Five years. Put your hand on your tummy. Enjoy the the video. Yeah, yeah, that's why I came today. That's why I came, yeah. You saw the video? The video. Last week. So I'm seeing the spirit and inflammation of your reproductive organs. Okay? Yeah, yeah. 
the doctor is saying a lot of things, blockages, uh, hormone imbalances and... So I'm seeing an inflammation of a reproductive system that's power got going through you. It's power got, what does that feel like? I'm feeling heat. You feel heat going through you. That's this fire going through you. What's your name again? Gloria. Gloria, that's a fire of Jesus going through you. Healing you. Healing you. Loose in Jesus' name. Peace of mind for Michael. I believe you're okay. That's what I believe. Amen. Amen. So you damaged the muscle in your left in your leg? Yeah, come. What happened? I went down on a bike, a motorcycle. And it, I love the left side, my, my broke shoulder, a blade. It's the power of God going down your left side. That's the power of God. Close your eyes, I can't help you. That's the power of God going down your left side. That's the power of God in the muscle, left muscle. Jesus, in the left muscle. In Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, move the left leg. Okay, walk. Walk. Someone say praise the Lord. Go on. Go on. What would you say? I said, look at the scar. It's like, yeah, it's like, it hurt. I had a lot of problems with it. Go on, off you go. Go up the stairs. Go up the stairs. Where's my catcher? You have to stay with me, Jeff. Look at me. That's the alcoholism gone. Dorothy, did we miss you? Did we miss me? I'm right here with you. I'm so grateful. I love Jesus. I believe. What happened to your head? Well, a lot of things. You. Were you the subject of violence? Many times, many times. Yes. I, I have been going through a lot with um, my kids. That's power God going through your mind. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Dorothy, look at me. He turns my morning into joy and dancing. You know, I always want to honour the work of the Holy Spirit. What some people seem foolish, seems foolish to them, is important to me. Amen. So many people, when they're filled with joy, they're delivered of suicide, depression, mental illness. This lady here is a subject of, of violence, all sorts of problems. What's happening, Dorothy? <laughs> the joy of love. The Lord loves you. I'm so great. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, I love you. And Dorothy, the Lord's delivering you. That spirit's coming out of you. Do you want to pray for her? Just cast it out of her. Spirit of diabetes. So Judy, you've had a deterioration of the back, deterioration of the back, the discs. That's power God going through you, Judy. Power God going through you. Yeah, some people, they don't like me turning my hand. It's because you need a revelation of why I'm doing it. I'm participating with the Holy Spirit. I love the Holy Spirit. Let's do what He's doing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bend over, bend over, Judy. Come on, bend over. I've been not, and it just, I have a lot of tension in my back all the time, and it's, it's gone <laughs> right now. It's gone. Yeah, it is. It's gone. You know, when the Bible talks about healing, it never says right now. <laughs> well, probably not. His promises are yes and amen. amen. Yes. Thanks. Some more. Fractured left shoulder. What happened, uh, Connor? Wrestling match. You believe that Jesus will do this? Yes. And that's the power I got on your left shoulder, Connor. Praise the Lord. This is Mum, is it? Yes. Just leave him, Jeff. Just. Pray. Ooh, that's a, that's heaven working on your shoulder. Close your eyes. It's heaven working on your shoulder. It's heaven working on your shoulder. Now, take your left arm and, and pull it out. Pull it out. Right, heaven's pulling on your arm. Pulling on your arm. Okay, you're okay. Move your shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what? It, it, it worked. Move it. I can't. I... <laughs> what do you say about that? Praise Jesus. Thank you. So... Connor, let me explain something. Someone else in the room healed you, okay? The kingdom of heaven. So he does it that we might glorify him and give him our heart, our life. You want to lift your hands to him and thank him? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So Jacob, how old are you? Eleven. Eleven. In his room, there's angels in his room. Asperges, come out in Jesus' name. Just close your eyes. I'm talking to you. Come out in Jesus' name. I believe you're okay. That's power I got on your feet. Power I got going through your eyes. Hey, Russ, almost missed you. That's Jesus never misses. Power God going through your shoulder, your knees, your joints. Power God going through, Russ. Power God going through. That's beautiful. That's awesome. Okay, move your shoulder. Oh, it's not popping. That healing came through the worship. (laughs) 
So Blue, what's your name? Elijah, but they call me Blue. So I'm hearing in the Spirit, instead of Blue, above all of that, is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. So walk in the knowledge that He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. All authority belongs to Him, business, everything. Amen. Power of God going through you. Do you believe He'll do this? Do you believe He'll do this? Yes, I do believe He'll do it. Well, He's doing it right now. Do you feel that? Yes. My bones have been in a lot of pain. Do you feel that? No, I'm not feeling that pain. Okay, go on over here. Bend down, do something. Someone give Jesus all the glory. So the question was, do you believe He'll do that? Do it. So her faith connected to the anointing. All right. So sometimes you don't have to pray or do anything. Their faith just connects. The Lord just sent me to this row. You want to stand up? Maybe because you need to go home. <laughs> uh, I think uh, the devil's trying to get the other. It'd be better this way. Sorry about that. That's the power of God going through your legs. So you've got a problem with your arteries, veins, arteries. Yes, yes. Varicose veins with a lot of uh, heaviness and hurting. Lord says not anymore. Come out. Come out. Come out of a leg. Now. You're free, Jill. You're free. What did you feel happen, Jill? I felt a fight inside of me and then I let go and it was gone. So come on, Jill. Come on. Hop up. She's still got some anesthetic. All right. Oh, the anesthetic's good. She's not going anywhere. England, deformed elbow. And, and over about half an hour or so, power of God just no longer deformed. Awesome, eh? So which one is it? The right one. You want to show us? believe that Jesus will do this? Yes. What's your name? Jordan. Jordan. <laughs> That's a power got on your elbow. That's a power got on your elbow. Just stay there, okay? It's power got moving through your elbow. So forgive the people that have hurt you, okay? Forgive the people that have hurt you because it wounded you on the inside, what they did, what they said, and it never should have happened. And you never dreamed it would happen, but it did. Now forgive, okay? Because God, because you're stuck. In the spiritual realm, I'm looking at your journey. You're stuck and you need to keep going okay so just forget what happened forgive and keep going with the Lord some things happen in life you can't understand so just let it go alright so that you're not held back that's the power of God on your arm power of God's going through your arm okay hold your arm out that's the power of God going through it. Power of God going through it. Hold it out. Keep it out. Stretch it out. It's the power of God going through it. In Jesus' name. 
That's the power of the Lord around the bone of the elbow. In Jesus' name, straighten, be whole. So Jenny, do you have a problem with bitterness, unforgiveness? Yes. And you'd like to get rid of it, but you're always struggling with it. It's a spirit, that's why you can't get rid of it. It's coming out in Jesus' name. I should have said it's a spirit, that's why you've always struggled with it. Come out, now. free. God loves you ladies. <laughs> Power of God going through the inflammation. I want to encourage you gentleness the gentle character of Christ. There's someone that you know who needs that gentleness and that love, okay? They need to know that, okay? Because at the moment they're getting a hard side from you, but they need that love. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. So you remember, what's your name? I told, go and ask forgiveness from your daughter. Be reconciled. Like like her, your breakthrough will come through showing the gentleness of Christ. Okay? The girl with the elbow, come over here. I'm seeing the power of God on that arm. What's happening? feel pain in it and it's there's no pain in it so you used to feel pain there's no pain so so the power of God's on that bone and it's like clay in the hands of the master so that bone is actually changing changing under the power of God so but I want you to sit here stay here in the building for half an hour an hour whatever all right it's worth it okay It's under the power of God. That's food addiction coming out of you, Mary Ann. It's power of God crystal on your husband's legs. You're a proxy. Proxy for your husband. I see him getting up in the morning. He's like, what the? He's healed. God loves you. You're a prayer. Yes. Like, you make me look like I'm in my diapers. (laughs) You're a woman of prayer. Yes, I love the Lord. He hears my prayers. I'm honoured to be with you here. A woman of God, a woman of prayer. Yeah. Because all sorts of things have been changed through your prayers. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Have some more. That's the power of God going. Was it your knees or something? Your knees? That's the power of God going through your knees. Tom, the power of God going through you. Be healed. Is it here? Yes. Here? How did I know? It's the power of God going through it. Just believe, sir. Just believe it's power of God going through it.
What's your problem, Angela? Um, ankylosing spondylitis is like an arthritis of the spine and major joints, and I've lost my job because. So you get a lot of pain in the middle to lower back. And shoulders, knees. That's the power I got going through your back. What you don't see is we have intercessors who are watching the live stream praying for everyone. Amen. And I just want to say thank you to all the guys praying. Wow, that's nice. Hey? Different. Bend over. Someone say praise the Lord. Uh, It's not hurting. You're fine. You're fine. Who's the parents? So what's wrong? Um, Jonathan says he hears a voice say that he's not supposed to speak above a whisper. So no one can ever understand what he says, even though he's very smart. she's having two weeks ago it started and this is a seizure she's having they were just they had to go because they had four other kids behind they left but that's what she's going through that's the power God going through her everyone pray for the child Stevie Ray Ray. so this is what's happening to the child that's the power God going through the child be quiet sir that's the power God going you want to see it healed now be quiet then. That's the power of God going through the child. Come on, you're about you ready for your miracle? Yes. Come over here. Come over here. Close your eyes, I can't help you. Where's the herniated disc? In my lower back. Now that's the power of God going through you? Okay, bend over. Up. Someone say praise the Lord. Go down. Keep going. Okay, come walk. Walk. Walk normally. You're okay now. Someone say praise God. What do you say? Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. You could barely walk over there. Thank you, Jesus. You had a herniated disc. Bend over. Thank you, Jesus. For great. It's great. You ready, Rosa? Como estas? Muy bien, ¿y usted? Ready? ¿Quién va a sanarte? Yo voy a tener una... ¿Quién va a sanarte? Jesús. ¿Cuándo? Ahorita. Can we have a courtesy cloth? That's the power of God going through you, Rosa. What does that feel like? Good. Feels good. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing. Power of God going through you. Okay, you're fine. Off you go. Walk. That leg's leg problem, was it? How's that? No damage. How's that? Great. Turn around. How's that? It feels wonderful. You had nerve damage. From radiation. Mm-hmm. How did it affect you? It ruined my leg. I couldn't do anything. What do you mean anything? Well, I could stay up for probably till 11 in the morning and then I'd have to lay down in bed for the rest of the day. Did it affect you walking? Did you have pain? Pain. Constant pain. And now? I feel good. Go and walk up the steps and say hello to Sarah. Someone say, praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Thank you, 
Healing is the bread of the children. Did you say hello to Sarah? She's not talking to you, Sarah. <laughs> Sorry, come over here. And we'll... it feels so much better. It's so much better. The weight, it felt heavy. It felt heavy and now it feels light. Who healed her? What's his name? Jesus. That's your foot being healed? I've seen you before somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Dallas? Dallas. Yeah, praise God. So I'm seeing like a, a trumpet, okay? And it symbolizes, um, sometimes they use trumpets to symbolize ambassadors. The ambassadors, they blow a trumpet. So in the spiritual realm, you have a trumpet to speak. So you can speak in the natural realm, but it's been given to you by heaven. It's the power got on you. It's the power got on you, Eleanor. Power got on you. Hello. Bye. Oh, that, there it is. That's fire from heaven. Just close your eyes. Be baptized in fire. Where's mum? You're the mum? Put your hand on his head. That's the power of God working on his brain processes, okay? Power of God working on his brain process. Power of God in his eyes. So that what he sees, he's able to interpret. Power of God in his ears. So what he hears, he's able to understand. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. God loves you, Kathleen. It's the power of God going through your cells, okay, Kathleen? It's the power of God going through your cells, Kathleen. God's restoring all the damage from the radiation therapy, the cancer therapy, okay? What does that feel like? Joyful, joyful, joy. Okay, take a walk. I think you're okay. Just take a walk and joy. In Jesus' name, we command healing into this baby in Jesus' name. Type 1 diabetes. That's the power of God going through you, sir. Power of God going through you. It's power of God going through you. Power of God going through you. Who's she? Your daughter. Okay. What's your name? Mariah. Mariah. What does that feel like, Chris? It's <laughs> feeling uh, just the love of the Lord just flowing through me. And, uh, you know, with that heart for physical, but I feel like the Lord's doing work internally as well. So I need to forgive. 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 Okay? Because it's consuming your thoughts. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 
So it's, it's hindering your life. So if you don't forgive and you continue to think about this, you're in danger spiritually of a demon of unforgiveness messing your life up big time. So you need to forgive and let it go. Will you do that? Yeah. So you see this lady over here? She's going to help you, okay? Yep. So go and talk to her. She needs to forgive to be free. Did you know about that one? No. Jesus knows even more than you do, Mum. Yes. So what's the problem? I had a massive stroke almost 11 years ago when I was pregnant with my son. You ready? Yes. So it's the power of God on you? It's the power of God going down your left side? The girl who had a deformed elbow. Come on, let's talk to you. Give me a hand. Stretch your hand out. Lift it up. Can you lift it? Lift it up. do you do? Um, train horses. You train horses? And you have a family? All of them, yes. Um, my uncle, my aunt, my parents, my cousins. No. Father, we pray that the missing link comes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. desperate and I am I've been in severe pain for since high school you ready oh man come over here who's going to heal you Jesus Christ or you let's just leave me out of it because he may not he may not he may not use me so you don't want to miss out if he chooses to do it some other way. So we're just going to believe that he heals you. Who's going to heal you? Jesus Christ. Cindy, you ready? I'm ready. It's power got on you. What does that feel like? I don't know. Just got there. Take the baby. Let him down the ground, Jeff. That's power got on you, sir. Take the boy. That's power got on you, sir. Just move over. Come out. Roll over.
You're free. It's gone. Hello. Praise the Lord. They were with me in LA, praying away. You want more? So what's your name, Eleanor? Leonor. Leonor. Okay. This is what I believe is going to happen. You ready? Yes, sir. Okay. You're getting a new job. Okay. You're going to walk away from what you're doing. All right. You're getting a new job. Okay. All right. Is that all right? Yes, sir. All right. In Him. Yes, Lord. Touch Him. In Jesus' name. By the spirit care will come. What do you want? A prophetic word? I want it, yeah. I, I want to hear from the Lord. I feel like I've been struggling to hear from Him. I feel like I've been struggling to hear from Him. And I just don't know about direction in my life. So I, this is what I'd give you. Don't put expectations on how God is going to speak to you. He has many ways. Okay? So I see you going to sleep. Spiritual sleep. I see you lying your head on your pillow at home and going to sleep. The Holy Spirit's going to move. Okay? She's my daughter. Her name, all she needs, direction. She's, um, need direction from the Lord for her life. Ever feel like you have a mental fog? Yes. And it's almost, it's like really there. You know, almost like you're looking into a fog. Yes. So your problem is spiritual. That's power God going through your brain. Just going to tap you, right? Come out. Come out. Come out. Jeff, can you bring my Bible? Come out. How does that feel? Good. Feels good now. You're free. The anointing set you free. Praise Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord, Tom. Can I, can I have a hug? What did you like about that, Tom? What did you like about the night? Let's, let's put it this way. I can't find anything I could say negative. It's been really great. I mean, I've been walking with the Lord since 1988. And it's just when I come around other anointed people, I just love seeing how God works through them. So it's been fantastic. You guys better be here tomorrow night. I promise you that. Your husband. Yeah, my husband.
Um, to fight the enemy, you need to open your Bible and take it into your heart because it's a weapon. Okay? So no good having your Bible shut. Open it. Meditate on it. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. This is the sword of the Spirit. You need to put it in your hand and use it. Amen? Amen. Bless you. Allergies. It's power of God going through you. Power of God going through you. Thank you. So that's the power of God coming on you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, um, that's the Lord delivering you from the chronic fatigue, okay? It's left, it's left, it's left. It's power God going through your bladder, power God going through your bladder, okay? Power God going through your bladder. Thank you. I believe you're okay now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's the Spirit of God coming on you now. You believe the Lord will do this, Chet? Oh, yeah, amen. amen. I do. Amen. So you got neuropathy. How does that affect you? <coughs> Excuse me. My hands and feet are numb. Do alignment now. Hands and feet are numb. Now. And they're burning. You believe that Jesus will do this? Yes, I do. That's the power of God going through you. That's the power of God going through you. Chad, that's the feeling coming back into your hands. Feeling coming back into your hands. Put your hands out. Up. What's happening? Yeah, I can feel. I can feel my hands. That's the feeling coming into your feet. Did you say you had foot problems as well? That's, that's the power of God going through your feet. Power of God going through your feet. Just put your foot on his. Softly. Power of God going through your foot. How's that? Yeah, I'm starting to feel some. Starting. So move your toes. Let him go. Move your toes. Okay. So just come and start walking around. Off you go, Chad. coming out of you it's coming out of you it's coming out of you it's coming out of all your cells coming out of all your cells in Jesus name what does that feel like <laughs> I don't know <laughs> just <laughs> that's the it's coming out it's coming out it's coming out Power got on your kidneys. Coming out, Jamie. It's coming out. What you call trauma is coming out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. So you're pregnant, are you, Bree? 
you want to be. Where's your husband? Yeah. How long have you been married? Ten years. Ten years. Let's believe, huh? Just put your arm around your husband. <laughs> Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we command this out of them in Jesus' name. Your spirit of barrenness come out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Loose your hold from them in Jesus' name. That's the power of God going through you. Power of God going through you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God loves you, Marcelino. El Padre Celestial te ama, te ama, te ama. Viene el poder del Dios, viene el Espíritu Santo, viene el Espíritu Santo. What's up, Vic? I have a slip disc and a pinched nerve. I fell. Feel good. Feel good. Why? Thank you. Why do you feel good? Because Jesus healed me. Because Jesus healed you. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. What's the problem? Diabetes two. Uh, I'm forgetting. Pain. Where's the pain? Shoulder, middle, and. Okay, come on, up you get. Okay, come for a walk. Keep going, leave the stage alone, it's okay. You're okay. So her walking frame is back here. Thank you, Jesus. What's your name? Robin. How do you feel, Robin? <laughs> Hopeful. You, you're using that walking frame. Yes. But now you're walking fine. Off you go. Off you go. Someone say praise the Lord. <laughs> so, Robin... Think of the curse of sickness has gone into your walking frame. I'd get rid of it. That's the power of God going through you to Tabitha. That's the power of God going through your back. Wendy, that's power God going through your hips and back. Tabitha, you are healed in Jesus' name. If you, if you want to bend over or something, you'll find you're healed. It feels better. Who healed you? Jesus. Wendy, you're fine. You're fine. Move those hips, Wendy. Power of God's on you still. Okay, move your hips. You with us? Yes. How's that? Great. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> he's had 10 operations. He's got bolts in his neck. He's had all these different operations. He's 82. And he's been uh, a lot of anger, spiritual outbursts. I, I 
I've been staying with him. Okay. For two months. In Jesus' name. I'm feeling better all the time. I'm feeling better all the time. Praise God. After 10 operations, I still have two more to go. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Dorothy. Thank you. What's the pain? What? Your pain. Pain in body. Oh, it's just uh, leg pain every day and stomach aches and everything. <laughs> what is your pain? Mostly in my stomach. <laughs> You're gone. Never again. That's power got on you, Cynthia. Mustn't be very nice having blocked intestines. That's power got on you. You believe the Lord will do this? Yes. That's power God going through you. Power God going through you. constipation is spiritually your blockage is spiritually coming out of you right now it's coming out spiritually it's coming out of you Jesus. hey Patricia new bladder new teeth new pancreas amen 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 that's the power of God going into your abdomen. That's, they're working on you. They're working on you. Heaven is working on you right now. Okay. What does that feel like? Uh, it feels like a calm and a peace and like moving water. They're working on you. Heaven's working on you. Angels are present. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. Angels are present. You're having surgery. Just close your eyes. Relax. They're working on you. They're working on you. Wow, that is a wonderful feeling in your abdomen. What do you feel? Good. What does it feel like? Water moving. Something is moving. It's like heavenly water inside you. Moving, 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 moving. That's a new bladder. That's a new bladder. You've got a new bladder. Thank you, Jesus. Your pancreas is in. Andrea, baptize me in the Holy Spirit, baptize me in fire, baptize me in the Holy Spirit, baptize me in fire. That's uh, the fire of God on your feet, fire of God on your feet. Fire of God on your feet. 
Farah got on your feet. What's happening? <laughs> I'm not sure. <sighs> what was wrong with your feet? Nerves and tendons and neuropathy and numb. Okay, you're okay. Tammy, come on, Tammy. Go for a walk. You're okay now. Someone say praise the Lord. <laughs> what does that feel like, Tammy? It feels good. They don't hurt. Sorry, what was that? They feel good. They don't hurt. What were they before? I couldn't even stand on my toes. But you're standing on your toes now. I'll hold you. Stand on your toes. Thank you. What was the problem? It's just been a year. A year of pain. And getting worse. Acupuncture and physical therapy and nothing helping me I don't do acupuncture. I know. That was, I stopped that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So you're all good. You're all good. And we're just going to reverse the acupuncture. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. You're clean. I'm just going to hit you, okay? Do it. It's power got on the esophagus. Yep. I warned him. <laughs> That's the power I got on your esophagus. He, it was more like an electric shock. Shall we ask him? What was it like? Well, it, it was much more intense than, than you hit me with. Much more intense. Wow, that was shocking. So he's not reacting to the physical, he's reacting to the spiritual punch that went through his esophagus. It did. It did. I don't feel the pain right now. I've had pain for a while. C-O-P-D. What did you think of David's testimony tonight? Oh, I thought it was awesome. It was great. <laughs> I went the same. How has C-O-P-D affected you? Uh, it has affected me in so many ways. There's so much I can't do things like I used to be able to do. Um, Sarah, I see songs from heaven going through you, heavenly songs. You're receiving a fresh impartation of God. A fresh impartation of God. Put your hand on your chest. I'm going to smack you, okay? Power of God moving in your, in your lungs. Denise, power of God. There goes the COB, COPD coming out, coming out, coming out. Open your mouth. Came out like a like a cloud. You've been delivered. What did that feel like, Denise? It's good. Okay, you can breathe now. Hop up. Breathe. Breathe. I can breathe. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. I- yeah, that's the power I got on your legs. You, 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 I see thin legs. Swelling's gone. Swelling's gone. That's, that's the Lord working on you. Put your hand on your chest. Just relax, Beverly. God loves you. Okay. What does that feel like, being able to breathe? That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Uh, I... I don't even know what to say. It's just, I feel better. I feel awesome. Thank you. 
You believe that Jesus will do this, Jackie? Oh, yes, I do. Amen. Be free. In Jesus' name, it's coming out of you. It's coming out of you. It's, come here, Jackie. It's coming out of you. It's coming out of you. It's coming out of you. Come here, Jackie. Jackie, do you give your life to Jesus? Do you give your life to Jesus? Yes. Yes, I have. That's the Holy Spirit moving in your bones, tissues. Jackie, that's the Lord healing you. It's the Lord healing you, Jackie. What do you feel happening, Sarah? I don't know. She's out. So I'm looking at you since you're a little girl. You've been waiting for this moment since you were a little girl. It's been in your heart that you would receive this. What is it you want from the Lord? Um, every I don't know. Let me tell you what you're going to get. Heaven is taking up residence in your heart today. <laughs> That's the glory of God. That's the glory of God filling your heart. Filling your heart. Because I, I hear you when you're a little girl praying, praying, praying. When you're a little girl. So that prayer has been answered tonight. Heaven, is, that's his glory in your heart. You feel that or not? Yes, yes. What does that feel like? It feels good. So... I see you praying, calling out to God. Do you remember that as a child? Stand up. So I'm watching you calling out to God earnestly. What were you praying as a child? Fear to get for him to help me. Fear. Get away from me. Yeah. So God has answered your prayer tonight. God's time is best. Even if we have to wait, his time is best. So peace has taken up residence. Okay. All right. Okay. You're married? Yes. You're married? Okay. So live in righteousness. Remember the message. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. Mike, hear the prophecy. There's more, more. You can dive into the depths of God's river. Swim, be baptized in the Holy Spirit. There's more. Be baptized in fire. There's more. Hallelujah. That's the power I got on you, Phoebe. So that's the glory. That's the glory. What's that like? Mm. Oh, Jesus. Oh. 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 Tom, the power of God is on you. Can I pray for you? Yeah. Don't squish my hand, all right? I see you on your knees praying. Okay. I don't have a card. <laughs> Just hold them up so I can see.
You feel the power of God on you yet? What's it feel like? I feel like I'm shaking. Ali, is it? Ali, that's uh, the arthritis coming out of you. Arthritis coming out. It's coming out. Come out. Come out. Come out. All of you. Out of her bones. All of you. All of you. Come out. All of you, out of her. You're free, you're free. What did that feel like? <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> it feels good. Okay, you're free. Move, do something that was painful before. Someone say, praise the Lord. I can't hear you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Did you have pain in your hands? It was in my back. It was all in my back and in my knees. And I couldn't even hold... Like my nephews, I couldn't wash dishes. It's, it's been painful. You're clapping, but before you couldn't wash dishes. <laughs> yeah. Move your knees. Right now it feels good. What do you mean right now? It feels great. It feels perfect. <laughs> because it is finished. That's the muscle pain coming out, Tanya. That's muscle pain coming out. Jesus' name, we speak to the heart valve. Kerry, speak to the heart valve. Power of God going into your heart. Power of God going into your heart, Kerry. Power of God going into your heart, Kerry. Power of God going into your heart. It's the upper heart valve on, on my left. Is that right? Yes. That's right. That's the power of God on it. How did I know it was the upper, your right, upper right heart valve? Because Jesus is doing surgery. You see, the spirit of wisdom and revelation will reveal the goodness of God. And the Lord's ministering, carry to your heart, to your emotional heart. Come and stand up, Kerry. What do you feel happening, Kerry? I just feel the love of Jesus. You feel the love of Jesus? Yes. Yes. The love of Jesus will heal you. Amen. You're all good now? How does that physical heart feel? I feel like I can breathe. <laughs> you can breathe? Yes. I want to hear a Pentecostal hallelujah. Jesus, heal Matthew. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, heal Matthew. 
all autism be gone. We're praying for her friend, Matthew. God loves Matthew. Amen. I believe he's okay. That's the power God on him. What's his name? Danny. Danny, that's the power God on you. What's wrong? Okay, I saw it. That's the power God on you, Danny. Danny, do you believe that Jesus will do this? Yes. We believe with you, Danny. Okay, just let him go. Come, Danny. Come, Danny. That's right. Come over here. You feel that warm feeling? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. That's Jesus' power, okay? It's all right, Danny. Just stay there. Jesus is working on you, okay? You feel a warmth going through your body. That's the power of Jesus Christ. Okay? That's the Lord healing your digestive problems, Danny. Okay? It's the Lord healing your digestive problems because there's only certain types of foods that you could eat that's being healed now by the power of Jesus Christ. Something about milk, milk products. power God going through you Danny that's your digestive system being being healed also just lie down Danny also you had problems going to the toilet that's being healed as well your whole digestive system is under the power of God now Lord we speak to the mind to the brain we speak to the brain in Jesus name be healed be whole Come out now. I see him normal. I see him normal. Someone say, Praise God. Okay, Sandra, look at me. Come out. Inch. There it goes, there it goes. I believe your marriage is free. What's the problem? She has, uh, hears voices and sees visions that are not of God. What's wrong with your foot? I've had pain for six years in my foot from an injury. It's in your heel? Yeah. How did I know? The Lord told you. It's revelation of the goodness of God. That's the Lord healing you. It's the Lord healing you. Can I borrow you for a moment? It's not your turn to be prayed for. I just want to borrow you. Put your foot on top of his bad foot. Which one is it? Just lightly. That's the power of God going through you, okay? That's the Lord healing your heel. All right, Jeremy? Uh, This young lady needs to renounce um, her spiritual abilities. She needs to renounce them. Ability to hear, to see, and her listening to voices. She needs to renounce them all. So you talk to her. Oh, you're all good now, Jeremy. Move that foot. Still a little bit of tightness in the heel. So it was painful before? It was painful. You're one of these people that's like, oh, it's still a little bit. You could say there's no more pain. There's no more pain. 
you're healed. <laughs> I said, what do you think? <laughs> hey, bye bye. <laughs> you can let it down. She's all right, Tom. She's got her. <laughs> You have many duties. I know that. power got on your knees where's the neuropathy Jeff right foot let's get out Okay, you're all right. Move your, your foot. Thank you. Lift your hands and thank Jesus. Go on. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Okay, you start walking. You're okay. As you walk, you'll be healed. Off you go. As you walk, you'll be healed. And then take a long walk all around. As you go, thank Him and come back. Okay, bless you. Hello, Catherine. Bye-bye, Catherine. She's coming. What's your name? MJ. Are you married, MJ? She's coming. Did you hear me? You happy? I'm very happy. She's coming. What's her problem? What's happening? Oh, God. 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 What's wrong with your spine? It's severely twisted. So just just come, stand there. It's untwisting. It's untwisting. Just stand just over here, sir. You just stand here. It's untwisting. What does that feel like? Warm. Undescribable. It's warm. It feels like honey on my back. It's untwisting under the power of God. It's moving. Your back is under the power of God. It's untwisting. Untwisting. Father, thank you, Father. I, I can feel, I feel it. I feel it. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So you have a new spine. New spine. It's straight. It's straight. Just a little bit in the lower spine is still being done. A little bit in the lower, about the L4, L5. There you go. The rest is done. Just the Lord's doing the lower spine. Come. Okay, that's done. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, hop up.
do something with that spine. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I can move. It doesn't hurt. It's not pressed. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Now, you have your life in front of you. How are you going to live your life in thankfulness? Oh, for God. <laughs> Just for God. Forsake the world. He's Tell the Lord how you're going to serve Him. By loving you with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind, Father God. And love others just like you want me to. And get out of myself and focus solely on you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Die to the flesh and live for Jesus. His life and peace. Amen. What was wrong with your back? I have lordosis, had lordosis and scoliosis, and I had a tort for how long, how torqued was it? A 33 degree, 90 degree torque down here. And 90 degrees? Yeah, we went, I got that, well, that lie of a diagnosis a year ago um, that I tilt and I, it hurt so bad. It is, I just got used to it. And I don't have to anymore. <laughs> you can go get an ex, another x-ray and, sh and send it to us. Send us a photo of it. Yes. For two. Because right. they're not the same anymore. Oh, amen. Oh, thank you. So how did this pain affect you? Low quality of life. You just have put a lot of emo uh, effort into managing, not focusing on it, not letting it bog me down. Um, a lot of just keeping it to myself. So how's it feel now? Awesome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Doing this was, like, oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> it was hard. It's not hard anymore. So how did this, this do you know her? My wife. How did this affect your wife? She, she relied on Jesus daily. And she. How did it physically affect her? How did what? She, I know she was in pain, but she wouldn't, she wouldn't, she wouldn't talk about it. She wouldn't complain about it. But yeah, it, her spine was twisted 90 degrees. She shouldn't be. You know, I think you should do a joy lap. Go and do a joy lap. Go and give a, have a joy lap. You can go and walk with her. You can rejoice with your wife. Have a joy lap together. Isn't the Lord good? Someone say, praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, have we done this row? We've done this row here. Power God going through you, sir. Move your knees. How's that? Feels good. Jesus. Where's the cancer? Breast cancer. Which side? Right side. It moved from my breast to my underarm to my back. And this is? Kiki. Put your hand on your abdomen. That's the power I got on your abdomen. So, Kiki, when you put your hand up like this, come, come. I want to teach you something. 
the power of God should have gone through your hand into your mum, but it wasn't moving. And the Lord said to me, because Kiki is afraid, the power can't flow. So now you have to believe that the Lord is healing your mum. Okay? So you say no to fear, no to anxiety, and then the power of God will flow as it should have through your hands because of faith. Okay? I know your mum has faith. All right, that's the power of God flowing, Kiki, through your hands. You feel that now? You can feel that now. Because doubt was holding. The power could not flow, but it's flowing now, flowing now, through your hand, feeling your mum, through your hand, through your hand, feeling your mum, going through her, in Jesus' Name. We take authority over the cancer. We command it out of her. In Jesus, there it goes. Come out of the back, out of the spine. In G- Thank you, Jesus. That's his power flowing through you. What does that feel like? Like God, Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, it goes in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. He didn't get prayed for, and it hits his neck. It causes a lot of problems, and I can see it affecting him daily daily and it also affects mental capacity sometimes when it pinches off and it's his neck both hands both hands on either side of his neck. Slowly, don't touch him. Right, that's the power of God around his neck. Okay? That's the power of God around his neck, in his bones. That's his bones lit up with the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory all the praise, all the honour. Just here, Lord. Just here. Just here, Lord. Just here. Okay. Thank you. I think he's all right. Move your neck. It's better. It's better. It's better. It's better. So let, let me tell you something. People say that to me, God uses me. It was His hands. God will choose whatever way He wants. The anointing is His. You understand what I'm saying? Maybe Nick. Amen. Praise Jesus. So, Brody, uh, character, character. Do you get angry, upset? I used to, not anymore. I've been delivered of it. Praise God. So, uh, that thing's gone, but uh, intentional character. 
intentional character. Okay? So that demon that you spoke about is gone, but intentional love, gentleness, servanthood, you know? Amen? So God does his part, and you have a part to play. So be intentional with your character so you'll be a good husband. Is that, is that a good idea? It's <laughs> 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 got the joy of the Lord. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. So there's two arms. There's my arm, and as I reached out my arm, another arm reached out to your daughter. Yeah, and last one, huh? <laughs> <laughs>